About 200 kilometres west of Uppington is one of the most scenic spots in South Africa, the Orgrubbies Falls National Park. I'm basing myself near the park's eastern boundary at Kamkiri Private Game Reserve on the northern bank of the Orange River. To make the most of the day, you've got to start early and in the morning light, I'll tell you what, this place is stunning. Camp Kiri is so much more than just spectacular scenery. There's heaps of things to do. Four-wheel driving, quad biking, abseiling and whitewater rafting. Guys, we're going to have a big day today or what? Yeah, we're going to have. OK, so where are we going? We are going to do a half-day river rafting stretch, which is going to be inside the Krabis Falls National Park. OK. This is nice and easy to do? Yeah. Yeah? No crocs or uh, hippopotamuses? Not at or... all. All human okay. friendly. And what about safety? Well, safety is important to us. Yep. So that's why we have two boats. Uh -huh. Evan will be the guide in this boat, and the two of us will, will take this boat. It's obviously good to have somebody with some experience with you in a boat. Right. So that's where you come in. I, it's my first day on the river. So welcome aboard and let's go. Well, once Evan and my comedian yeah. paddling partner Harve had armed me with the safety gear, it was time for launch. This is a heap of fun and a great way to see more of this magnificent country. At this time of year, this section of rapids near Camp Kiri is relatively safe and very easy to negotiate. What the boys didn't tell me though, was that the Orgrabi's Falls were actually not that far downstream. A much safer way to see the falls is to jump in the car for about half an hour and drive around to the main gate of the park. So this is the falls. Uh, this is the Orgrabi's waterfalls. And uh, we just stopped with the boats 200 metres from here. Gee, I'm glad we didn't go over the edge. This is huge. How, how long is the drop from top to bottom? Well, from the top of the bottom of the water level down to the bottom of the waterfall, yep. it's approximately 160 metres. 160 metres. Yeah. Has anybody ever uh, gone down and over the edge? And A couple of people, a lot of people going down, but only one that I know of survived. Wow. Uh, That's an incredible amount of water. Listen to the noise. How did it get its name? Uh, Karabi, what does that mean? It's another word for place of the big noise. Oh, well then you can see it because it is, isn't it? Yeah. There's a lot more to see here and if you're keen, you can do a combined 18 kilometre hike, mountain bike and paddle around the park. Or you can stay in the car and take a six hour drive around the park in your off-roader. You can even camp here. To find out more, look for the links to the South African National Parks website at www.southafrica.net. Now the last part of our South African adventure for today is going to be visiting some mineral hot springs and I'm really looking forward to it. But on the way, well, we found this village here called Rimvasmark. Now, it's home to the Nama people. Now they came here over 2,000 years ago from Namibia. They've been farming this land ever since. But back in the 1970s, as a result of apartheid, they were forcibly removed from the land. Well, about 10 years ago, they were given it back and they've come back and set up a beautiful community. The hot spring is still another half an hour away and it's a sometimes precarious drive through some remote and rocky country. And there, at the bottom of a gorge that has had the shape of the South African continent carved into its walls over thousands of years, is an unassuming little hot spring. This has to be the best way to finish a big day exploring the Orgrabi's Falls National Park. When you head out this way, I'd highly recommend a stay at the nearby Kamkiri Private Game Reserve. Check out their website for more information. Nigel, magic country, mate. I know, it's incredible. Now, we're about 50 k's outside of Cape Town in the Cape Winelands district, which is home to the towns of Stellenbosch, Paal and Franschhoek. And this is incredibly productive country. You know, they turn out a billion litres of wine every year. Oh, mate, that's a lot of wine, even by your standards. Ooh, I reckon. <laughs> you know, we should stay a couple of extra nights. Yeah, I think we should. Well, we've got a lot of work to do, you yeah. know, research. Yeah. The valleys are incredibly picturesque with some of the finest scenery in South Africa. And this is where you'll find a number of great vineyards. The most famous and historic is Grand Provence Estate, which was founded in 1694 in Franschhoek. Today, there's a lot going on here at Grand Provence, what with the luxurious guest house, beautiful gardens and award-winning restaurant. But all of this is built on one foundation, winemaking. And Grand Provence Vigneron Yarko Guimès is responsible for some of the finest wine in the region. 
We're so growing um, Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, um, Merlot, and a bit of uh, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. Beautiful, yeah. Um, I like all of those. <laughs> and look, Nev's upstairs was Jacques, the head chef, and I think they're cooking a, uh, an as yet of beetroot, so I'm guessing there's beetroot in it. Here's the challenge. Which variety would you recommend? I think the Chardonnay will go well with that. Yeah. Um, it is I was a, thinking a red because <laughs> of the colours. Yeah. It is a, it, it's a difficult one because it's beetroot. But yeah. uh, um, our 2005 Chardonnay, it's, it's got a nice crisp, crisp um, acid to it. Yeah. And it's also um, got a lovely buttery, apple type of nose on it. So hopefully that will um, complement the beetroot. Sounds good to me. Jacques de Jaeger is executive chef here at the Estate Restaurant, which specialises in modern international cuisine. Today he's chosen locally grown beetroot to create one plate of a degustation menu. First, Jacques commissions him to peel three large beetroots. He then juices two of them and reduces the content down in a warm pan. Jacques has got me whisking some cream. This will add the fluffiness and creaminess that are the hallmarks of a good mousse. So here's uh, some of the juice that we, we did earlier. Yep. Okay. Okay, just pour it in here with the whipped cream. Oh, look at that colour. <laughs> Looks lethal, doesn't it? It is. Now, you want to mix that together? Yes, we're just going to do a quick little mix through there. While the mousse sets in the fridge, Jacques peels and slices these tiny candy-striped beetroot. When the mousse is set, it's carefully plated and then garnished with this oh-so-decorative breed of beetroot. To make the carpaccio, Jacques finely slices the remaining large beetroot and lays these across a triangle of wax paper. So it creates kind of like a silhouette in the background. And what you do is just cut your beetroot. When it's cut to shape, it's simply a case of plating, removing the paper and then rubbing in some extra virgin olive oil and adding a pinch of salt. Next in this assiette of beetroot is a golden beet suspended in tomato water jelly. In the meantime, I've been snipping off some baby beetroot sprouts for a garnish, to which Jacques adds a squeeze of lemon, a pinch of salt, a squirt of olive oil, before placing the mix on top of the carpaccio. There's some beetroot juice left over, and Jacques adds a splash of hot water before putting the pan on the heat. He then adds a pinch of salt and an ingredient that turns the liquid into a beetroot foam. It's basically just condensed soya protein. And protein is the one thing that makes foams, well, it's a foam's best friend, really. The granules are mixed into the liquid and it quickly foams up. Jacques then skims the top off the foam and spoons it onto the plate to complete this assiette, this truly exquisite assortment of beetroot. Well, there we go, Neville. That's the, the dish right there. Yeah. So there's, you've got your um, beetroot mousse, your golden beet jelly, your beetroot carpaccio, your little beet sprout salad, and the beetroot foam. Nigel, have I got a treat for you, my man. Oh, Nev, the assiette of beetroot. You have it in one. Look at that. It looks so good. Special. I'm wondering whether we should eat it or just look at it. Oh, I think we should, mate. Hey, listen, while you've been hard at work in the kitchen, I've been hard at work in the cellar. With the Selecting the warrants. Yeah. Beautiful. Chardonnay. Chardonnay. Cheers, mate. To the woods. Lovely. Yeah, beautiful. Why not? Now, this. Here this we is go. different, mate, isn't it? So we go. Oops. Mmm. You know what they say, Nev? You can't beat a good root vegetable. <laughs> mm. That's beautiful. Well, that's exquisite. Isn't that warm, mm. hey? It's so different. What does tree planting, soccer and whales have in common with a luxury holiday resort? Neville and Nigel will tell you right after the break.